Wait a minute. Have you heard the weird tales of the Whistler? I'm the Whistler. Sunday night, and again CBS presents The Whistler. I, the Whistler, know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, many secrets hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And so I tell you the amazing story of House of Greed. A taxi cab rolls through the night and comes to a stop before a brownstone mansion on West 52nd Street. The driver opens the door, and a handsome, well-dressed man steps out, pays the driver, slips quickly up the stairs, fumbles with a bunch of keys, but the door opens. Oh, hello, Jackson. Mr. Talbot, welcome home, sir. Where's Mrs. Talbot? Oh, uh, she left three days ago. Uh, went to the place in the Catskills. There's a note on your desk, sir. Oh, good. Your brother, Frank, is waiting in the library. Oh. Hello, Frank. What do you want? John. Now, look, Frank, I told you the last time I'd give you no more money. Oh, but it isn't gambling debts this time. I'm reforming. I'm going to settle down and work. Hmm. Work? Hmm. I met a big cattleman from South America. He has a very lovely daughter. And she talked her father into letting me buy an interest in the business. How much? Ten thousand. Oh, I'm sure I'll make good, John. Oh, very well. I don't mind doing something like that for you. When are you leaving? Tomorrow. I've had a plane reservation for four days. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the check, John. You're a swell guy. Uh, Tell Mary goodbye for me. Yeah, she's up in the Catskills. So Jackson told me. Good Lord. What's wrong? She hasn't gone to the Catskills. I I can't understand this. What on earth does she mean? Well, what is it? Read it. John... This life is too lonely. I can't go on like this, so I'm leaving you. I found someone else who is more considerate of me. But I... First, I'm going home, and from there, it doesn't matter. I'm sorry, but things just didn't work out for us. Mary. Someone who's more considerate of her? Why, I have given Mary everything her heart desired. She must be out of her mind. Uh, Of course, you have been gone a lot, and women get crazy ideas. It's knocked the pins right out from under me. Yes, I can see that. You... Better take it easy for a while. Yes, I feel, I don't know, kind of sick. All of a sudden, nothing seems to matter. Oh, maybe she'll wake up before she gets too far. Perhaps I'd better cancel my trip for a few weeks until you get straightened out. No, 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 never mind. I'll, I'll pull myself together. I wouldn't have you sidetrack your plans for the world. I think you better go now, Frank. I'd rather be alone. All right. But uh, don't do anything foolish. What do you mean? Well... If you brood about it, you're liable to get some crazy ideas and end up really holding the sack. Good luck, Frank. Lots of luck. Thanks. Goodbye, John. John sits for the remainder of the night staring over the top of his desk. The next morning, he closes the house and starts on Mary's trail, which takes him to London, Paris, Berlin, all over Europe, but to no avail. Finally, he drops his active interest in his business and goes to live in his country estate. And one day, 14 years later, he finds himself on a honeymoon. He has married a widow named Helga. Well, John, dear, we got away without too much trouble. Well, it does seem a bit silly, rice and honeymoons at our age. Our age? Well, you sound as though we're a couple of old grannies. I'm 36 and you're 45, and I certainly don't feel old. Why, of course you're not, Helga. <laughs> oh, dear. John, now that the wedding's over, there's something I haven't told you. Oh, I... now I... I well, I, I haven't said anything because I was afraid it, it might make a difference. Well, I know what it is. You have a son... How did you know? (laughs) I wondered when you were going to mention it. Oh, well, he finishes school this year. It's been quite a struggle putting him through college. 
but he's very bright. Paul has studied hard and managed to cram two years into one. Could he spend the summer with us? Why, of course. Oh, John, you're a darling. I should be able to find a place for him in the business. Oh, ask him to come down to our place in the country. Oh, thanks, John. You're wonderful. <laughs> So Helga's son, Paul, came to spend the summer at the country place. And he stayed the next winter and the following summer and the next winter. Now it is summer again. And Paul is still visiting his mother and stepfather. The first year, he worked in the office every day until noon. Found business very boring. So finally, he quit going to the city at all. But, Mother, I've looked the whole thing over and there's nothing there that interests me. Well, you could learn about the business. You seem to be able to learn anything else you want to. But I don't care for business. Oh, you're a fool. I worked my knuckles to the bone to give you an education. I married John Talbot to give you a chance, a chance to do something. John has no children. It's a huge business. And one day you could control the whole thing. I'm disappointed in you, Paul. You're letting me down. Well, it seems to run very well without too much attention from him. If we were to uh, inherit it, why wouldn't it continue to run just as well? You either get down to that office or you pack your things and get out. Why should I? I'm perfectly satisfied. I'll tell John to make you go. And suppose I tell him what you just said? That you married him just to give me a chance? Married him for his money? You wouldn't dare. And uh, suppose I tell him that you were never divorced from father? That he's still down in South America... Still wandering around trying to find a gold mine. If you dare open your mouth, I'll... Oh, hello there. How are you, Helga? What's this I heard about South America? Oh, why, why, nothing, darling. Paul was just talking about someone he met from down there. Who do you know from South America, Paul? Oh, uh, oh fellow, I met him today. Were you in the city today? Uh, no, uh, I was down the village. I didn't suppose you'd been out of the house today. What's his name? Why, uh, I don't remember. I didn't think you would. You haven't been out of this house for three days. Paul, I think you're the laziest man I've ever met. All right, all right. I'll start back to the office Monday. If that's what you and Mother want me to do, I'll do it. Why, I'm sorry I wasn't here for dinner, Helga. I was detained in town. Well, I have quite a bit of work to do. I'll be here in the library for two or three hours. Very well, John. I, I won't bother you. I'll go on upstairs. Besides, I want to have a little talk with Paul. Good night, dear. Good night, Helga. <clears throat> what on earth? Who's out there? Why? What do you want out there? May I come in? I want to talk with you. Well, why do you come to the library windows? Why didn't you ring the bell? I, I didn't want to cause a disturbance. Disturbance? What do you mean? May I come in? Yes, yes, come ahead. Don't you know me, John? Good Lord. Mary. I'm sorry, John. I had to talk with you. I saw the light in the library. What do you want? I... I need your help. Where have you been all these years? Oh, every place. Are you still filled with resentment? It's been too long ago. At first I was. I followed you all over Europe, but never quite caught up with you. No, I'm glad I didn't. There's no telling what I might have done. I'm sorry, John. I was a fool. And I know that now. <coughs> <coughs> May I sit down? Why, of course. <coughs> Are you a cold? Yes, I can't seem to shake it. I've had it for weeks. You see, I, I hate to mention it, but you look a bit shabby, Mary. Aren't you doing well? Oh, well, yes. Yes, I'm doing all right. Are you? You've uh, married again. Yes. And your wife is here? Yes. Then I'll be as brief as possible. I, I wouldn't want her to know that I was here. You want me to help your husband? No, not that. I have no husband. What about the man you said was more considerate of you? He left me four years after the baby was born. Baby? You have a child. Yes, John. She's 17 now. And where's the man? I don't know, and I don't care. Oh, John, I made the biggest mistake of my life. I should have known better. But he practically carried me off my feet. And I learned later, to my sorrow, that he was not worth shooting. Where's your daughter? 
She's in a school in Vermont. I've worked hard to give her an education. I've done everything I could do to give her a chance. I've not seen her very often. But now, well, I... I'm sort of cracking up. I've been ill a lot, and I seem to have trouble getting a job. Job? What kind of a job? Why, any kind of a job. What have you been working at, Mary? Oh, John. I made such a miserable mess of it. I was never able to face things. I always took the line of least resistance. What a shame. And now I've come to the end of my rope. Joan has finished school. She's a lovely girl, John. I can't let her know. I can't take her with me. Why not? She deserves so much more. She deserves a chance in life. I want you to do something for her. Why should I? Because she's your daughter, John. My daughter? Yes, yours and mine. She was born seven months after I left. Here's the birth certificate. Please, John, do something for her. She shouldn't be made to suffer for my mistake. She's innocent. Does she know I'm her father? (laughs) No. And she doesn't remember the other men. Here, I'll give you her address. Fernwood College. And and I'll write a letter to her explaining all about you. Well, I... I... Oh, John, you could do so much for her. She's a young lady now. And so lovely. Please see her. I know you'll fall in love with her. All right, Mary, I'll, I'll see her. I'll have her come down here. Oh, John, John, I'm so sorry. So sorry for everything I've done. Please forgive me. I've forgotten everything, Mary. Oh, wait a moment. Take this check and do something about that cough. No, thanks, John. I won't need it. You'd better take it. Thanks. I'll be all right in a few days. The cough will be gone. Good night, John. Good night, Mary. If he brings this girl here, do you realize what it means, Mother? Yes. It's his own daughter. If he falls for her, if he, if he likes her, he'll change his will and split the estate. She's entitled to it, isn't she? Now, why should she be? Strange girl he didn't even know existed. Popped up out of nowhere and cheats us out of half the estate. I know what you mean. We've been here for several years. You're his wife. It isn't fair. What would you do about it, Paul? I'd see that she didn't get anything. How would that be possible? Suppose she uh, she didn't like it here. Supposing that before John got attached to her, the things happened that would make her dislike everything here. She runs away soon enough, he won't change his will. Perhaps you're right. And if she doesn't? Then maybe something could happen to John. Later, something could happen to the girl. But in any event, the will must not be changed. Where do you get such ideas? (laughs) That, Joan, dear, is the story of your mother... I trailed them all over Europe, but never quite caught up with them. You mean you planned to kill them? Kill them? I was filled with revenge, but I finally gave up the chase and returned here to wait. I knew that sooner or later she'd show up. But it's been so long ago. Surely you've lost the desire for revenge by this time. Time heals many wounds, my dear. If you had caught up with them and satisfied your revenge, what good would it have done? Quite right, my dear, quite right. Tell me... Have you no recollection of this man? You can recall nothing about him? Absolutely nothing. Remember, I was only four when he went away. And you do believe that I'm your father? What else am I to believe? Mother proved that with the birth certificate. Proved that I'm Joan Talbot, not Joan Evans, as I've always believed. Of course. And would you like to remain here? Why, yes, I, I think I would, well, but There I... seems to be a doubt. Why do you hesitate? I don't know. From all the evidence, I belong here. I have a legal right, but... Well, I can't seem to find words to express it. Express what? From the moment I stepped in the door of this house, I've had a a strange feeling. A cold, chilly sensation of of fear. Is it something you feel about me? Yes. You're afraid of me. No, I, I don't think so. Is it Helga? Well... Is it Paul? 
Oh, please, please don't ask me anymore. I don't know what it is. Well, what has Paul said to you? Nothing. No one said anything. It, it's just a premonition of, of evil. There's something wrong. Something horribly wrong in this house. Oh, you're imagining things, Joan. It's all in your mind. It will pass as suddenly as it came. You're young, Joan, impressionable, and you suddenly found your life turned upside down. A new environment to which you've never become accustomed, but you'll get used to it. You're my daughter. I want you to have what you deserve, what is rightfully yours. I understand. And I'll try to overcome this feeling. Yeah, that's better. You're a lovely girl, Joan. An intelligent girl. I know I'm going to be very proud of you. Thank you. I think I'll go to bed now. Well, it is rather late. Good night, dear. See you in the morning. Hello. Paul, what are you doing here on the stairs in the dark? I wanted to tell you something. What? You're very, very beautiful. Your eyes, your hair, just like gold. Gold moonbeams. And so... Paul! In your throat. Your throat is slender and soft. Like... Take like... your hands off my neck. Paul! I don't know many girls. Girls don't like me. Let me by. You don't like me either, do you? Well, I... I know. I can tell. Elsie didn't like me either. She was afraid of me. Who's Elsie? She was a girl... In the village. She worked here in the summertime. No one knows what became of her. What? I don't remember what happened to her. But her throat was slender and white like yours. Let me by! Why do you stay? I can't leave. It's too late. But you must go at once. Do you mean that Paul... That's part of it. Then what else? John. John? What about him? I can't tell you. But you must believe me. What about my father? He doesn't believe he is your father. And he's planning to get revenge on your mother through you. I don't believe you. I won't. Get away while you have a chance. No. I won't run from it. I'll face it whatever it is. Good night, Joan. Now it is nearly midnight. John still works at his desk in the library. But outside, a man steps softly through the trees upon the terrace, quietly opens the library doors, and steps in. Hello, John. Frank. Good Lord. Yes, Brother Frank. <laughs> well, why don't you say something? Come in, or get out, or something? Why, why, come in, Frank. You fairly knocked me off my feet. I didn't know whether you were alive or dead. It's been a long time, John. Why haven't you written me? Well, I was hoping I could make a go of that ranch and pay you back, but uh, I guess I was just born unlucky. Oh. They had a revolution and cleaned Senor Gonzalez out and me with him. It's too bad, Frank. But you're still the same steady, reliable John. Yes, sir, I've tried my darndest to be like you, but... Well, it just isn't in me. I don't have what it takes. The last two years, I've had a pretty tough time. I caught some sort of a malarial fever down there, and it's impossible to get rid of it. it keeps recurring. You certainly don't look well. You've aged quite a bit. You better have Dr. Richards look you over tomorrow. Huh. She's still kicking around. I thought he'd be gone long ago. How's your new marriage turned out? Oh, very well. Very well indeed. Good. Ever hear from Mary? Yes. She came to see me. 
I knew she would eventually. She was broke and quite ill. She'd had a tough time of it. And you helped her out. Hmm. You would. You couldn't turn anyone down. Well, she was mainly interested in my helping the girl. She had her in a school in Vermont. And so now you're taking care of both of them. What else could I do? Good old Joe. I sent for the girl and brought her down here. She's a lovely child. Sweet as can be. And you'll give her everything her heart desires, I suppose. And then you'll have another problem on your hands with Joan. A girl 17 either wants to get married or go to college. Oh? Well, I've decided that. <laughs> Really? I'd like to send her to Wellesley. Good. Isn't every man who can have... Just a it. minute, Frank. I'll be right back. Well, what are you doing out here in the hall this time of night for? Oh, well, uh, 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 Mother sent me down to see why you hadn't come up to your room. Oh. Well, tell her I'll be up in a few minutes. Yes, uh, yes, I'll tell her. My stepson, Paul. His mother thought I was staying up unusually late. Oh, well, I'll run along. Good heavens, it's after 12. Now, when's the last train back to the city? Twelve o'clock. You've missed it. Well, when's the next one? Five a.m. Oh. Well, I, I suppose I'll have to wait for that. Can you put me up? Yes, of course, Frank. Oh, thanks. Well, wait a moment, Frank. I probably won't be up when you leave, so I'll give you this now. Oh, now, John, I uh, I didn't come here for that. Hmm? I... <laughs> well, that is not exactly. <laughs> no, you never have. Here you are, Frank. A thousand. And see Doc Richards first thing in the morning. And drop in at the office and let me know what he says. Thanks, John. I... I'm i sorry that I have to take this. I... I only wish that... Oh, forget it. We're not kids any longer. You're too old to learn new tricks now. Run along to bed, Frank. I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, uh, take the guest room at the head of the stairs. Good night, John. See you in town at noon. Night, Frank. clock strikes three as two figures slip down the darkened hall and quietly enter John's bedroom. Then a few minutes later, the same two figures make their way in the moonlight through the trees to the back of the estate, carrying a long, gruesome bundle wrapped in a sheet. <laughs> Now it is three nights later, and Joan, Helga, and Paul are in the library as Joan paces back and forth anxiously. But where could Father have gone? He didn't say a word about going out of town. Oh, maybe he doesn't want to come back. Why not? Mm, I don't know. Maybe he doesn't like it here. You should have listened to me. But you didn't say anything about... Well, well you just mentioned me. Could it be a mistake? I just had a weird feeling of impending disaster. Something is wrong, I know. If I didn't belong here, if I could leave, I'd not stay another moment. Who knows what will happen next? I know. What do you know? I know what will happen next. They always happen in twos. Many people have come here, stayed a while, and then suddenly disappeared. What time is it? 11.30. There's a train at 12. I'm leaving here. Hello? Yes, this is Joan Talbot. What? Heavens, who? Where? Yes. Yes, I understand. Yes, I... I'll be here. Yes. Who was it? I, I don't know. I've never heard anything like it. What do you mean? It was a man and he... What man? He said he had a message for us. He'll be here at 12 o'clock and to wait for him in the library. The police? I don't know. He said he'll come to the garden windows, to the library window. Who could it be? I don't know. But we'll wait. I'm going to see this through. the garden. Who, who is it, Mother? I, I don't know. The lights. Why did you turn out the lights? I turned them out so we could see outside. Who is he? I don't know. He, 
He eases up on the terrace. Who, who are you? What do you want? I came to talk to you. What about? About what happened here at three o'clock in the morning several days ago. Nothing happened. Nothing. But something did happen. Turn on the lights. No, don't turn them on. You couldn't see me if you turned on the lights. Paul, good Lord. Was it you who phoned me? I spoke to you, but I didn't phone you. Mother. What happened in this house at three o'clock several days ago? A man was murdered. What? Paul. Turn on the lights. Turn on the lights. Joan Talbot, open the top drawer of that desk. Now take out the paper. It says, on the night of August 5th, we, the undersigned, murdered John Talbot in his bedroom and buried his body on the estate. We didn't. We didn't. It's John. It's John. Sign it. Sign the paper and I'll go. Sign it, Paul. Sign it. You did it. You killed him. Sign it. You help me. You sign it. I can't. I can't. Turn on the lights, Joan. John. It's, it's him. It's him. He isn't dead. No, Paul. Yeah, we didn't. Paul, what happened? I'll tell you. You killed my brother Frank instead. Come on in, Sergeant. You heard it all. Yes, we heard it all. Father, what on earth happened? When you phoned a while ago, I almost fainted. I was sure you were dead. I knew from the moment you told me you were frightened in this house that something was wrong. I put two and two together and realized what it was. They didn't want you to share on the estate. I knew they were planning something on that night. And then my brother came. He accidentally got into my room by mistake. And they killed him instead of me. I saw them carrying his body through the trees. So I disappeared for a few days and evolved this plan. You've nothing to worry about any longer, Joan. Nothing. No. <laughs> nothing to worry about. But the truth would certainly amaze you. All that Helga said about Paul and John was true. John was planning revenge, but not through Joan. That night your brother Frank came back. You discovered something, John. What was it Frank said? And then you'll have another problem on your hands with Joan. A girl 17 either wants to get married or go to college. It was then, John, that you knew the truth. The only way that Frank could have possibly known that the girl's name was Joan and that she was 17 was to have been with Mary. So John knew then that it was Frank who ran away with Mary and deserted her when Joan was four years old. And then, John, knowing that Helga and Paul planned to kill him, deliberately let Frank occupy his room on that fateful night. John's revenge was satisfied, and he didn't have to turn a hand. <laughs> That's all. CBS has presented The Whistler. And now an important announcement regarding a change of time. Beginning one week from tomorrow night, on Sunday, September 13th, The Whistler will come to you at 9.15 p.m. Remember, Sunday, September 13th, at 9.15 p.m. Original music for this production was composed and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. The Whistler is written and directed by J. Donald Wilson and originates from Columbia Square in Hollywood. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>